boom, there you go. Sarah Strong to Yukon. It is confirmed. She did the little news interview and revealed under the jacket it was a Yukon Husky where she is going. In this video, we are going to talk about Sarah Strong committing, the impact, and how it will shape out for next year in terms of the roster and how this really solidifies UConn as a very, very, very good chance to make it to the championship game and win it in 2024-25. Before we start, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. All right, let's get into this. So the biggest and final piece of the 2024 class is finally committed, that being Sarah Strong. So there were three options on the table. She would narrow it down to three, which were Duke, North Carolina, and UConn. And essentially, it seemed like a choice of staying local and being close to family and helping Duke or North Carolina build something much like Juju Watkins did at USC or to go to the established power and play for a blue blood. Now, during this process, everybody had a whole bunch of speculation. One was Don Staley played basketball with Sarah Strong's mom, so they were had a little in. The other one was Danny Strong. Her dad went to North Carolina State, so that would be a good option. But ultimately, it was to be UConn. I wonder if her dad, Danny Strong, I imagine he had big impact on this, but I wonder if it was just the way UConn plays. Because even if you are a star at UConn, you are going to get your shots, but it's not going to be iso ball and totally dependent on what you do. Much like how Southern Cal currently has to play with Juju Watkins. That puts a lot of pressure on a player, and ultimately, you're probably going to come up short when a team has to develop their full entire game plan around how to stop you, or they're able to do that, versus if you're a star in the cog and there's a system it allows the team to fall back and use the system at times instead of just putting all that pressure on the star. In terms of what does this mean for UConn next season, well, she slots in quite well. Obviously, Aaliyah Edwards has declared for the WNBA draft, and she is out of there, and that was the 6'3 size. You would expect that she would start or be a very big contributor this year. The freshmen, KK Arnold, Ashlyn Shade, and Cadence Samuels had her moments as well. They all did a good job of contributing. Obviously, K.K. Arnold and Ashlyn Strade started and got them to the Final Four. This was the real piece that they needed because Ice Brady was up and down all year. So she had moments in the tournament where she was hitting her shot. She even had a turnaround. Like she posted Stolke up and did a turnaround. That's one of the first times I've seen her post hard. So she has her moments and she has potential now it'll be good to see with her with a bit of competition. I wonder if that will increase Ice's productivity and how she comes back next year. But on paper, you would think Jana L. Alfie will be the center and then Sarah Strong and Ice Brady will battle it out for the power forward spot. And to be clear, the way UConn runs their power forward, it's not just going down to the block and sitting there and having your back to the basket. UConn moves their power forward. They get to go out high split out, they will utilize her to her full skill set. If, if you are a ball handling big, then it makes sense that you want to go to UConn because they utilize them so well. And really, that's probably the thing that had impact on Team Strong is just the way that she would be able to be utilized at UConn. Her coach and her dad have spoken about this, that she's not just a post player, and I think that's probably the key of why she went to UConn. Her coach compared her to Magic Johnson. <laughs> that sounds a little bit, uh, it's a bit too much hype for me because I was a Magic Johnson fan. But when you watch her, she's big, she can move, and she can shoot. And in addition, she can pass and rebound, and that's why UConn is so excited to have her, and it works perfectly. She gets to play the next year with Paige Beckers. In theory, the UConn hope or the UConn dream is we get back, we get Paige, her championship to secure her legacy. Hopefully, AZ Fudd is healthy and gets to come along on this ride. And then the keys to the car are passed over to Sarah Strong, and she will lead the next generation of UConn championships. That is the ultimate dream for the UConn fan. The torch gets passed, and here we go. We keep on going, 
And this obviously helps cheer up the UConn fan that obviously, I think most, if they put their hands on hearts, probably knew that if they made it to the championship game, they were going to be a very long shot versus South Carolina just due to their size issues, not having a super big to go against Cardoso and just the overall depth that South Carolina had. So even though it was a painful loss last night, Versus Iowa, and it really felt like a game they let get away. In the post-game press conference, Gino was looking at the stat sheet and saying, if you would have shown me this stat sheet without the score, I would have assumed we would have won. It was a ridiculously good effort to hold Iowa to 71 points, which they did, but they just did not get their offense going, and that's the excitement with Sarah Strong. As Gino said all season, we needed three players to go off. So normally you could depend on Beckers and Edwards, and they didn't have their best nights, and then a third would come along, and sometimes it was shade. Last night, it was KK to some extent, but it just wasn't quite good enough. During the press conference, Gino held his tongue like somebody told him a tweet from Coach Yo saying, I'm sure Gino's kicking himself about using Edwards to repick, as they call charging on that quite often. And he was, <laughs> you could just see it in his eyes, really. I'm getting called out by another coach who's sitting at home in the lounge chair questioning what we do or how we do it. And if you're a UConn fan, that has been the big thing for this year. It reestablishes that UConn does things the right way, and that is why they win. They didn't have the home regional advantage to make it to the Final Four. They traveled to Portland. They won the games that they weren't supposed to win. And with all the injuries, they were still able to make it back to the Final Four. So as Gino said, it appears that we still are able to do or know what we're doing. We haven't forgotten how to coach and play basketball at UConn. It's worked for all these many years since we've gotten the first championship. Instead of the story being what's wrong with UConn, the story should be why hasn't South Carolina yet won back-to-back championships? What's going on there? UConn's in the mix. That's all you want is to be in the mix in the current day of basketball. And that is where they are. As every year they have a chance to win a championship, as they go to the Final Four every year. Last year, they didn't make it, but they had lost their superstar in Paige Beckers, and then they lost their star 1A in AZ Fudd, who was coming back from a knee injury and was a shadow of herself. Now UConn will have two stars. They will have Paige Beckers, who will be distributing and have a whole bunch of toys to play with, who she will be able to pass the ball and orchestrate the way that she likes to do it and then take over when it's time. And the good thing is it will be very fun to watch. When UConn is clicking, it is just beautiful basketball to watch, much like Oregon State, who's another fun team to watch when they have it going. But again, they are just loaded. So again, you've got El Alfie, you've got Ice Brady in the forwards, then you'll have Aubrey Griffin coming back, so you have a good swing player who will be competing as well. Caden Samuels will compete with her. Morgan Chelly, who is the swing forward guard coming in. She's 6'2", 6'3", as well. So she's quite long. Ali Zabel, not to mention the ongoing players that you'll have coming back with AZ Fudd returning, hopefully healthy and productive. But even if she doesn't, you've got backups. You've got Ashlyn Shade. You've got Beckers. You've got KK Arnold. It's unbelievable how much talent this team will have next year. It's going to be fun watching them put it together. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great night.